All right, what's up guys? We're back again. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at pairs trading. We're gonna jump right into it. The goal is we're not gonna be taking directional bets. We wanna figure out a way to be neutral in the market. We wanna be long and short in a way that helps us manage our risk better. And as much as everyone likes a YOLO, we all like throwing a little cash on a directional bet. When you look at what all the big players are doing, most of them are probably using some kind of market neutral strategy or they're collecting fees for tasks that people could learn how to do themselves and that's kind of what keeps them going but unfortunately we can't do that we have to be smart so first we want to look at something being stationary i covered it a few videos ago you can check out our fractional differencing but just to go over that let's make two functions one that's just going to be a sine wave and the other one is going to be the square root of x and we'll add some type of random normal value just to give it a little realistic chop you know and so we'll do lin space from 1 to 20 and now we'll have our first y that's just f of x and we'll just do y1 is g of x feels like we're back in calculus so now we'll plot this just to give a brief look at sort of what it looks like to have a stationary series versus something that is not stationary for anybody who is just completely new. And as you can see, we have a beautiful sine wave. If we could trade something that looked like that, we'd all be buying Bugattis, you know. Andrew Tate would not be able to ask us what color our Bugatti is because we would have a Bugatti. This bottom one though, that looks a whole hell of a lot more realistic. And this is what ends up getting you chopped around in the market trying to pick a directional bet, then it turns against you, then you get pissed and you lose all your money. Or you don't, maybe you have good risk management and a healthy temper and you're one and very tranquil and zen with the market but a lot of people aren't so you know the the bottom one's more realistic it tends to be way more difficult and why would we want to trade that if we can find something that's stationary also having stationary data is important usually when modeling any type of time series data it's just a requirement that our data is stationary again if you want to see how to make your data stationary you can go look at our fractional differencing and that'll be a new unique way you maybe haven't heard of for keeping a bunch of memory in your data and differencing in an order not equal to one but less than one so the next thing we're going to do just for example's sake is i'm going to go over how to implement pairs trading and when you look at building out some type of class for pairs trading, let's say this class is going to be called pairs trade, then the goal is instead of having a instead of having just one asset be stationary without having to difference it, which is very rare. Sometimes you'll find it in commodities, rates, or a Forex pair, but to have something just be stationary would require some kind of economic or just seasonality that's long lasting. And it's very rare that you find a real just stock or Forex pair that is purely stationary and lets you 
trade <clears throat> the reversion back to the mean. And so the goal with pairs trading is we're going to try to construct using the buying and selling of two different assets or more. It could be two portfolios in order to make a stationary process. And the way that we're going to do that is using linear regression. You can go watch our linear regression model video. It's the one of the previous videos out there. But I'll walk you through while I build this class. So we're going to have our data frame. We'll have the list of tickers that we have in our data frame. Then we need to define for our AD Fuller test some percent that we deem as showing that the station, uh, the process is stationary. And then we'll have a max lag, which is also going to be for our ADF test. Because in order to figure out if the process that we made is stationary, we're going to test it with our ADF just like we did in our fractional differencing video. And so now we can just do a little bit of this. And with this all in mind, we now need to make the functionality. So we're going to go straight into a method. We'll just call it spread calc for spread calculation. And what the spread calculation is going to do is when we make an instance, we're going to have it just immediately calculate the spread and add it to our data frame. And so, in order to do this, we're going to make a model and then using the regression dot linear model, we're going to put our one ticker in and then we'll put in the second one. Again, this could extend into a portfolio if you want to challenge yourself. But for simplicity, I'm just going to work with two assets. This is going to get the linear regression between it. It's going to try to model the second ticker price data so that this y equals mx plus b comes out. And why this is important is that after we fit our model, we're going to get what's going to become our hedge ratio from our parameters. Where this is going to be the beta coefficient that helps make them equivalent, which means that we can calculate our spread then by taking the first asset minus the price of the second asset times the coefficient or the weight, which would be the hedge ratio. Now, some of the problems that are going to come from this is the fact that you're not always going to be able to buy or short fractional shares. And so this is something you need to take into consideration when actually trying to apply this into a strategy is you're sometimes going to get an unrealistic like half of half of a share. You also need to take into account margin, fees, costs, all that fun stuff. But for now, it's just fun education, right? The next thing we're going to do is add our spread to the data frame, which is going to be equal to what I just defined. And then we'll subtract our model params zero. This is our hedge ratio. And then that's going to get multiplied by the other ticker. And then we'll return our hedge ratio. And as you can see, we've just gotten the spread by 
seeing if there is a linear relationship between these two assets. And what we're going to end up being able to do with this is check using the check stationary. We'll make another method. And we're going to use the ADF test to see if our spread is actually indeed stationary. If it's not, then we just throw it out because that's not what we're looking for. But if it is, it gives us the option to buy the lower one and sell the higher one. And when they converge, we're able to make the difference. And so for the check stationary, all we're going to do is again, as we've seen before in our videos, use the ADF and our max lag is going to be equal to that max lag. We're going to have it default to one. Then our test stat is equal to our ADF zero and our T stat ADF four for a threshold. And then if the test stat is less than If our test stat is less than T stat, we're going to return true. Else, we're going to return false. Whoops, need to capitalize that. So, we're basically going to see if we're below the threshold that we've defined, which is saying that we can reject the null that there is. We, we're rejecting the null and we're saying that there is no unit root. And that's going to let us see if it's stationary or not. Now, I'm going to add some functionality in order to plot this spread, but I won't do that here, so I'll be right back. All right, so we're back. I made the plot spread. Basically, all it's doing is it's letting you plot the spread, and if you'd like, it'll plot the prices as well. So I just made that. I also made a quick fix to the threshold that I put percent five. Make sure it's five percent because otherwise it will not work when accessing the dictionary for the ADF test. And other than that, we're ready to go, <clears throat> ready to test it out. And so we took the data from why finance and <clears throat> i first just randomly decided i'm going to take the spy and the qqq and we're going to see if these two have any stationary action if we can make a spread out of them the reason i chose them is because they're they're both very similar they have correlated returns as you can see by our correlation right here the returns are very correlated and I was just looking for an example you would want to look for stuff that's either in the same sector there's some reason some connection that these things would move together don't trick yourself into thinking that just because you found this anomaly in two random stocks that move together unless there's something that actually ties them together assume for the greater good of your own bank account that you just are finding something that doesn't exist. Unless you can prove otherwise, try to prove yourself wrong. But for this example, we're just going to stick to two assets. It's going to be the SPY and the QQQ. There's no real, there was no real research done to why. It just seems like something that would make a little bit of sense. And so for our data frame, I took just the last 720. This is just to shorten it. It's something you'll want to watch out for when you actually do this yourself because you don't want to overfit. You don't want to put your bias on anything. Again, you don't want to. You want to do everything possible to prove yourself wrong. And people tend to not do that. So. This is just for simplicity, it's so it looks cleaner. 
and to show that this works. The next thing that I did was I put them in to the pairs trade, which then used the check stationary. And we found out that they are not. So this would not be a valid trade to be looking in or investigating to take. And then I used our plot spread. I said plot price. And so here's our spread. And here are the prices. And so basically, moving forward, you can use this class and you can use it to investigate different pairs or you can use it to investigate different portfolios. Maybe you have 10 stocks that have similarities and you randomly split them into two portfolios. And now you trade those two portfolios against each other. That could be a good idea. Just getting into the mindset of trying to make something that's market neutral and establishing how you're going to weight these portfolios using some type of linear relationship. And so we just covered the basics. This is a good starting point. There are many considerations if you plan on actually going and trying to make a strategy out of this. You have to be careful about trade expression. You don't want to have a time frame bias, so you'd want to make sure that this is working on multiple different time frames. And you really just have to try everything possible to prove yourself wrong. There's going to be fees, costs. There's going to be times where you find just random things that work together, but they're not actually an edge. And the more clever you can get, and the more into the detail of trying to make some sort of simulation and backtest that replicates the real world, the better. You'd want to forward test it. You have to figure out your trade expression with if you can really get the open or close price. All these fun things and fun details. If you want to learn more and go into more detail, then I recommend you head over to the Medium where we usually write in more detail about whatever topic we're presenting here quickly. So if you'd like to learn more and you want to know more things to look out for, head over to our medium. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Keep trading, make some money, hopefully. Not financial advice. We're not doing any of that. There's no financial advice, just education and fun. We're all here for fun.